Today we're going to look at Godzilla vs. Kong, directed by Adam Wingard and starring Alexander Skarsgård and Millie Bobby Brown. This is a continuation of the story started way back in 2014 with Godzilla, and continued with Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters. There's Godzilla. He's a huge friggin' lizard. There's Kong. He's a huge friggin' ape. They have this ancient rivalry going back thousands of years that Godzilla has decided must be resolved right now. And they has fight. They has several fights. There's also a big bad evil corporation. They're doing big bad evil corporate things. They decide to get involved in the fight between Kong and Godzilla, and everything goes to hell. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if you were expecting more, you clearly made a wrong turn somewhere and need to go back the way you came. This is a very simple movie. It's a very dumb movie. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Everyone in this story who is involved with keeping tabs on either Godzilla or Kong is convinced that they have this ancient rivalry going back thousands of years, but they never really do explain how they know this. It's just assumed. They may have touched on this briefly in one of the previous movies. I don't really remember, but in any case, this movie just assumes this is a fact and everyone just goes with it. Kong is still living on Skull Island, but they have trapped him in this giant dome with this virtual sky that's basically just a bunch of video screens sprawled across the ceiling of the dome, which he soon discovers are fake, so I don't know what the point was. I'm not even sure how they managed to build that thing. It's quite impressive. There's a bit where Kong's handler, played by Rebecca Hall, has a hearing-impaired daughter, played by Kaylee Hoddle, who actually teaches Kong how to communicate using ASL, which was... Kind of adorable. Skarsgård's character has this theory that the Earth is supposed to be hollow. I'm not even sure how that would work, but because this is a very silly movie, his theory turns out to be completely true. Earth is hollow, and inside Earth, there's basically another Earth, where the ceiling is also the floor. And somehow this inner Earth has its own sun. Did I mention this movie is silly? Brown reprises her role from King of the Monsters, and she has become very invested in a podcast from some anonymous whistleblower from the Big Bad Evil Corporation. And she asks her friend, played by Julian Dennison, to help track this anonymous whistleblower down, which leads to a pretty funny line. We should not be looking for some weirdo on the internet. We just had an assembly about this. And that is good advice, kids. You should never go looking for weirdos on the internet. Most of them are either pedophiles or Nazis. Sometimes both. And eventually they do track the guy down, and the three of them end up infiltrating the Big Bad Evil Corporation, which apparently has terrible security if some weirdo with a podcast and two kids can just break in. And this Big Bad Evil Corporation is building something that Godzilla really seems to have a problem with. And if you know anything about your Godzilla movies, you can probably guess what it is. This movie is very big and very loud and very dumb. And that actually works in its favor. If you tried to do a serious take on Godzilla vs. Kong, I really don't think it would have worked. This was the way to do it. Godzilla vs. Kong knows exactly what it is and what it needs to be, and it is not trying to be anything else. And if you're watching Godzilla vs. Kong, I'm willing to bet you're here to see big friggin' monsters beating the crap out of each other, and this movie will give you that many times over. They fight in the wilderness, they fight in the city, they fight in the secret lair of the Big Bad Evil Corporation, they fight on a boat, which can somehow support the weight of both Godzilla and Kong. I'm not sure how that works, but again, this movie is dumb. And the fights between Godzilla and Kong, and anyone else who might happen to show up, are a lot of fun to watch. And no, I'm not going to tell you who wins. Visually, I really have no complaints. Of course, Godzilla and Kong and any other monsters that might happen to show up look fantastic. So do the environments. The Hollow Earth may not make a whole lot of sense, but it looks cool. The story was exactly what this movie needed. Nothing more, nothing less. And even though this is a very silly movie, the acting was solid across the board. No one here is phoning in it at all. And I especially want to call attention to Kaylee Hoddle, who played the little deaf girl. She was really good in this. And again, the scenes with her and Kong were actually pretty adorable. Overall, this movie is stupid, but it's my kind of stupid. And it is actually very well made for what it is, and well acted and entertaining as hell. It knew exactly what it needed to do, and it did it well, and I can't really ask for more than that. If you're in a place where you can safely see it on the big screen, then by all means, Go for it. If not, it is on HBO Max. And if you don't already have HBO Max, this might actually be worth the price of a subscription. I think that may be the first time I've been able to actually say that, but 
yeah, it's worth signing up for HBO Max for this movie. And that's all I have to say about Godzilla vs. Kong. Till next time, take care.